Hey folks, Courtney here, and this is take three. <laughs> so we're getting started on the cabin, and if you've been following me, you know that this is part of our financial independence plan. So if you like this video or videos like this, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, and I would love for you to share it as well. I'm trying to get better at being consistent and also at learning to tag and things like that. As soon as my business settles down a little bit, I'll get a little better at that. I wanna first mention that the plans that I am using in this video are from a company called easycabindesigns.com, and the house plans there run between $40 and $60, and they are so worth it. That's a roundabout. They're not expensive at all, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about what they include. <coughs> so excuse me. So my husband and I, our long-term plan is that we will build three cabins on our property and those cabins will in turn generate income. We will be paying cash for these. I've already saved up to build the first cabin. I only have $20,000, so we're doing a lot of it ourselves. And I did end up taking another contract, which will give me another 8,000 should I need it. I hope I don't. I've been really working on money saving plans and also collecting material to build the house. The, um, yeah, I'm just going to jump right in. We have two long term renters. So my son will be living in this first cabin. He goes back and forth to school for the next year and a half. So when he's not here, my plan is to Airbnb. We live in a resort town, and so we also have that whole farm experience and can offer kind of the tiny house living experience. This is not a tiny house. It is, um, well, it's kind of between what they call a bigger tiny house or a small house. It's 597 square feet. The other one we're building is 543 square feet. They are both two bedroom, one bath, and we will be hiring out the electrician, who is my father-in-law, heat and air, who is my son-in-law. My husband and I are roofing contractors. My husband can do interior trim work. He can do flooring, he can do all of the porches, um, exterior work and carpentry, but we also have a crew that does carpentry work for us a lot out here and they're very good. They're a little expensive, but they're so worth it and um, because they're very efficient. So we hope that we can be within our budget and I've been pricing things and planning things as we go. And so, I will let you get started on seeing what we're doing here. Okay, so bear with me as I change. The first cabin we're building is this cabin right here. All right, so it won't look exactly like that. It will be painted, most likely I'm gonna paint it white. It depends how good it looks when I get it with these wood accents. I don't know if the house roof will be green. Actually, our house roof is green. However, being roofing contractors, I will probably use whatever they can give us on sale. And um, they often have like a short run of things that they no longer use. So I'll probably do that. This, I will show you that I'm changing the layout of this just a little bit. So some of this is gonna be moved around a little bit and modified, but this is the cute little cabin and it has two lofts in it. We'll come back to that. This, after that cabin is built and we get some money coming back in, we're gonna build this cabin. The second rent, renter will probably end up in one of these cabins or that one, um, whichever one she wants. This one is a two bedroom, one bath, living kitchen, and it does not have a washer and dryer. I'm having to work that into the plan with a new compact washer and dryer. This one will sit up on the hill and the view up there is a little better. Um, the other one where it is going to sit, they just this house just did not work for the site. And then the third one, which is on down the road that I hope to build, this is a rather large house and it's about a little under 800 square feet at the bottom and at the top it's got about a 900, um, not 900, about 300 square foot deck. I'll show you the 
So this is the electrical plan. That's the great thing about these plans is they come with a material list, an electrical plan. They come with instructions on how to build it. And so that saves you a lot of time and money. And plans are often about six to a thousand dollars or more. If an architect does it, it's thousands. So this is extremely helpful. We live in the county. So I don't know if there would be rules and regulations if you live in the city, but for people who live in the country, this is great. So I love this plan. Living room, kitchen, dining, dining, kitchen, living, washer and dryer, bathroom. I would put a full tub in there, master, and then a big loft up here. I would put storage in the eaves. I would have a closet and some cabinetry or shelving built in there. So that's super cool. Let me show you. A few more things so it has how to build the trusses it has all the elevations they give you two copies of each easycabindesigns.com you can also find them on Amazon and then they give you a material list so that you can go and get all the prices for yourself that's what my husband is doing as we speak um, we're breaking ground this week I'll show you this a plan okay so let's come over here to my plan so this is the plan that we are building and I have built several houses and remodeled several houses myself. I am self-taught. My dad has a knack for it and I also have read a ton of books. I'm certainly not an expert, but I think about use and use of space. This plan had no closets. Don't ask me why. It's a hunting cabin. Maybe that's why. So I what I did was I walled off the bathroom here. We're gonna move this wall back a hair so we can get a bathtub, toilet, and sink in. I changed the swing of the door so to come in from here, which makes more sense if you're coming to the bathroom from the bedroom. And then the kitchen was not laid out. So we'll have floor to ceiling cabinetry, and this will be a little broom closet that will have double doors facing out actually, and the brooms fit in an apartment size refrigerator, a washer and dryer combination set that will be under the counter, water heater under the counter if my plumber is willing to do that, the sink and the stove. So this is all counter space and this is counter space. I just drew in, um, I have these little Oh, templates that you can buy at the store and with that are the actual size of a small table and four chairs. I drew that there just to see what it would look like. I don't have a table yet. I'm gonna pick out something small or I have a template for my husband to build a small farm table. I actually have the dimensions of a sectional that we own that's in storage, a really high dollar sectional that we inherited. And it may be too big, but I went ahead and drew it in and just kind of played around with the Windsor chair, a side table and a little table here, TV and the door going out. Over here, I'm taking this wall out, so this is one big room. The house is 16 feet wide, but it has six, uh, it's not two by fours, it's two by sixes, so the walls are really thick, which makes it super insulated. My 1800 square foot house will be is built like this will be built, and our electric bill last month was $57 or $47, so this will be super efficient. Also, in a plan, this, this is the south-facing direction. You want primarily south-facing windows. You wanna minimize north-facing windows. I'm probably gonna take this one out. And you wanna minimize east and west-facing windows because that heats up the house more and this allows for more passive solar gain. So I've also read a ton of books and built a passive solar house before. So here, I'm gonna have our carpenter come and talk to me about building stairs that go up and turn, and I'll show you the loft in a minute. Under here is a closet, and either I may consider moving the washer dryer here if that's possible, or a desk and laundry basket holders here so that you will have a place to put your laundry because there is no laundry um, room, if you would. The door would be right here walking in so that it would swing open towards the shelving. This is a queen size bed, two end tables. You would have this view out here. If you're sitting in bed drinking coffee or tea, you can look out over here and a little dresser right here. I thought about putting a window here 
But to be quite truthful, um, it is, I'm not sure if I want to or not. This is my neighbor's property and they're about to put in a new house, but maybe a trailer. And I just don't know if I want to look at someone else's house or trailer. So um, I'm hoping it's a house, but still, I don't want to be staring at someone else. Here, the windows, I'm going to show you my windows in my house. I've done this with all of my windows. That's our property. All of my windows are about a foot higher than nor in a normal house. And I did that on purpose. That way you can slide furniture up underneath the window and you don't have to worry about blocking a window. The other thing I do in the houses I've built is I put the vents, yeah, I'll show you this. The vents are in the ceiling and that makes it easier to have the, to move furniture around so you're not worried about covering vents. And I will talk to my carpenter about whether or not we should put a window right here. All right. If you turn the page, and there's a big eight foot porch out here, and we'll add an eight foot porch out here as well, off the front and the back. So this has a loft on two lofts. We're gonna do away with this loft. For one thing, and this is a vaulted ceiling, I'm gonna just have this walled in, and I'm gonna have an attic access to get up there in the kitchen, because quite frankly, um, we don't, you know, we don't really need another loft. It just takes up more space and it, you have to build stairs. And I don't want a loft ladder if we're gonna Airbnb this because I think it would be too dangerous with children. So I'm just gonna use it for attic storage or even extra insulation. Over here, the stairs will come up around here and I'm either going to have just a bed in two. This is, a eight feet wide so it's big enough for a queen size bed and two end tables but i think what i'm going to have do is just do a full size bed and two tables and in the eaves if we can fit it i'm going to see about putting a closet or some shelving and here you have a little desk depending on where the stairs come out where we end up putting the stairs will depend on where the bed goes. I want a, the view here. Again, it's going to kind of look at my neighbors, but this should kind of be high enough that it goes out over their house and shows the pasture and the mountains. So that's the, the plan that we have right now. All right, so I did, I mentioned that we have a second renter and she is um, one, she has been wanting to move out here and buy property from us, but we're not interested in selling our property. So what we've done is we've offered to, when the first house is built, I have a, a plan, I'm obviously a big planner, um, to Airbnb the house and save up the next twenty to $30,000 so that within a year I can build another cabin for her to live in. She will come and stay in this cabin, tell me what she likes, what she doesn't like, if she'd rather have the smaller plan. She is an older lady. Um, I wanna say she's nearing 70 and she rides horses and she wants to have her horses and we have plenty of land for horses. So, but she also is on a fixed income and needs a smaller home and wants to live between here and another town about four hours away. So that's good to have a long-term renter. We could probably rent the cabin for substantially more than what we're renting it to her for, but we know her, she's like family, and there's some sense of comfort in knowing that you have someone. Plus, at some point in the future, she may not wanna live out on a farm, and she may decide that she would rather, you know, live somewhere else, and then we could would still have it as a rental. Eventually, after about two to three years of saving, I will build the third cabin and that will become a permanent Airbnb, if not a, another tenant. There is a shortage of long-term housing in my community because it's a resort, it's a resort city. And what has happened is all of the long-term housing has turned into Airbnb because people can make so much money. And so it is in my heart to provide long-term housing for people who I have there's a really shortage for people with disabilities and people who are older women actually in our town. So that's kind of a passion of mine. I have another plan. I traded a girl some services 
for the plan. She's supposed to be working on that. A third plan that, I, I mean, a fourth plan that I may also add. We have 40 acres. There's a, over here to my left right now, there's a big hill that's overgrown and not um, developed. If we can go in and take clear it out and leave all the big trees, we should be able to place a couple of houses on it with, it's probably about two acres, and still place them where there's some privacy and they have access to the horse, the horses and the donkeys and things like that. So that's our plan, um, easycabindesigns.com. I'm not affiliated with them. I just really have been impressed with the plans. If you live in the city, you should check your codes before doing this and um, keep following along. And again, if you like this, please thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.